I would like to present to you Ultra Noir, created in 2006. Ultra Noir is a French digital agency producing custom and user-oriented experiences. Um, JB or JB. <laughs> um, he's the co-founder and creative director. We have Mathilde, who's the UX leader, and also Nathan, who's a creative developer. And they want to share with you their story, their spirit of Ultra Noir and the mentality of French craftsmanship what it takes to build a vision and to sustain the creativity um, throughout the daily life and work. Uh, please clap very hey, loudly. Well, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. uh, so first of all, I want to say that uh, we are very pleased and honored to be here. Uh, and I really want to thank uh, Awards and uh, Oscar and his team for organizi organizing this. Yeah, it's a great pleasure and uh, just um, say uh, bravo to Oscar and his team. <laughs> uh, as you may, may notice, we are French, so are, we are not very used to speak in English in conference. So if you don't understand something, don't hesitate to raise your hand. So um, we'll talk about uh, creativity today. So the presentation will be in uh, four parts. The first part will be to talk a little bit about us, not so long. The second part will be, we call that creativity for all. So it's creativity with the client, with the user, and uh, with the team. We'll show you some uh, case studies, only three. And uh, the final part would be on uh, creative development. So that's why we are free to speak. So I'm a creative director. Mathilde is the, uh, our UX leader. And she's only 23, but uh, she did the conception of uh, mainly all our, our websites. And Nathan, who is Australian, uh, is uh, one of our creative developers. So just to speak a little bit about Ultra Noir, uh, we tried to do this, this, this exercise uh, several times. It's just to trying to summarize your agency in one sentence. It's just sometimes when you meet a client and somebody, it all, he, he asks you, what do you do? Most of the time you've said, I create websites, but everyone can create a website now. I have a, a daughter of uh, 10 years old, and she can create a website. So we try to describe this more precisely. So we are a digital agency, not a studio agency, because we are more than uh, 20 people. I don't know if there is a specific number, but uh, we're an agency. And we create tailored, efficient, and aesthetic online user experience. Uh, Taylor, we have a French uh, name for that called Sur Mesure. So uh, we try to do really a specific work for each client. Efficient, because we really believe in efficiency in uh, web design. And the last one is aesthetic, because we try to, to make this thing look beautiful. And uh, why user experience? Fin, I started to, uh, to work in the internet in uh, 1908. <laughs> And uh, we were already speaking about user experience. That's a term now that is very fashioned. Everybody is talking about UX. But uh, for us, it's a very simple thing, user experience. Is, uh, you ask to a user to surf on a website for one minute. He closed the website and just ask him, what do you feel? What, do you, uh, what is your reaction? And that's what we call user experience. It's the experience of the user. It's not about... Uh, an interface, uh, web design, or no, it's just the experience of the user. So just some facts about us. Uh, we have created the agency in 2006, uh, the 4th of July to be precise. Uh, we are 30 people and uh, in three cities. So uh, our main uh, office is in uh, Paris. We have uh, an office in uh, Marseille. It's a city in the south of France. And uh, we have... Uh, we are opening one office in London this year. For, for the moment, there is only one person, but uh, we're opening an office. Uh, we have worked on uh, more than uh, around 100 projects. So our, on our website, we decided to show all these projects. Uh, for some agencies, there is a selection, so they just show the best project. But you can check we have. Uh, so it's quite fine to, to go back to history. And uh, you can uh, find some of the websites, of course, are not online. But we have some shot screen of website uh, from 2006. And you can see that uh, things have ha changed before, uh, between. And uh, we have won around uh, 60 uh, awards. No, 
just to say. Alors, so the first part, so is creativity fighting with utility? I remember because I read an article um, with this title just when Flash was uh, not dying, but uh, we felt that uh, there was something wrong with, uh, with Flash. Because I remember I was really a fan of great Flash website, and in France we have wonderful agencies uh, such as uh, Soleil Noir, for example, and I love their website. But when I met some new client, they always ask me, can you tell me the best production that you can see on the web now? And I, I was always showing the site of the month of a website I will not name here, but... Uh, <laughs> and the reaction was always the same. So. I don't know, w w okay, it's, it's great, but uh, where, where do I click? Uh, or another reaction is the, it's great, it's visually impressive, but uh, what is the goal of, the, of this website? And somewhere, I think Flash went too far into experience, forgetting, I think, the user. So, I don't know, it's, uh, but thanks to Steve Jobs, or maybe it's another reason, we go back, Flash has disappeared, and now we work on HTML website. And I think there is some kind of utility link to this language that is more user-oriented. As I see now, we have more and more HTML websites doing the same thing that I saw in Flash for years. And uh, so we'll talk about this later, but that's just a question. Okay because we think that useful design is creative design. We think that a good designer can mix utility and creativity. <coughs> we define ourselves as designer and not as artist. I just recommend you to read the definition of the word design in Wikipedia. It's very simple, it's just what one sentence, but what you can see is just the definition of our job. So our job is basically to solve a problem. An artist, I think, works for himself. A designer works for people. Okay. So, when we design a website, well, 90% of our job is to design a website with a mobile version, a tablet version, but that's the most part of our work. So we have, what we said, three kind of people involved into um, a website production. So we have the team, we have the user, and we have the client. Uh, maybe it's a bit, uh, I don't know for the old, well, maybe uh, the younger people don't really know this, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this image, and it's quite a big caricatural. But most of the time we consider that the team is the good people, the client is the bad people who don't want to make <laughs> extraordinary things, and the user is the weird guy, we don't know really uh, what he wants, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, for the user, our first question is how much creativity the user can handle. Of course, uh, uh, I don't know how we work, but uh, us, we don't design persona, we don't have a specific or scientist method for that. Most of the people, we have some clients, we consider their user like this. So when we design a website, they said, no, the guy doesn't know anything. It, it's just the same as the, uh, drinking a, a glass of water. So. <coughs> so most of the time, they consider that the person has never thought of his life, especially in, in e-commerce. We do a lot of e-commerce websites, and that is the most common uh, we, uh, we can hear. And we always heard the same thing. I don't know if you remember this question of, of the fold. It was a nightmare. Because it, it was, uh, I think, now, now things are, are changing. But I remember that people were saying, what's beneath the fold? The fold is the bottom of your screen. The user will never see it. <laughs> so just imagine, just one day you are in front of your computer on a browser, you, you see some content and you don't scroll. I, I seek for many years scientist uh, method or scientist uh, uh, studies uh, to prove that and nothing really exists. It's kind of a myth, um, a legend. And thanks to the tablet and the smartphone, the swipe, these folk start to disappear. You see that now the, 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 the length of the web pages are longer and longer, not 
too long because it's quite boring. But now we don't have this problem of the fall. I remember the, the rule of the free clicks. So if you go or looking for an information and you click, you have more than three clicks, uh, it's failed. What we try to say to our clients, it's not the number of clicks that counts, it's the scenario that you will write between the home page to the final result. It doesn't matter the number of clicks, if the experience is good, if the scenario is well written, you will not count the number of, of, of clicks. And now we have something new that is called what I call the burger effect. So, for example, now we try in the, our new design to insert this into the main navigation. And I don't know if you have heard of a guy called Jacob Nielsen. He was the pop of ergonomics. <laughs> and he said that if you can't see a navigation on a website, it's impossible to surf on this website. So that's why what we heard that when we designed a burger uh, for a desktop version. And what we're trying to explain to our client, you use apps all the day on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and you have this symbol. So why, when you switch from your uh, smartphone to your desktop, you will not understand this, uh, this symbol? So what I'm trying to say is that just imagine your father as the user. Is your father is the guy who cannot drink water. Just trust, trust the user. The, the user is not a stupid guy, the user is a smart guy. He uses a smartphone every day with quite complex apps. So he's ready to have a new uh, way of navigating on a desktop uh, website. So now, can the client can be creative? Clack. What we heard the most of time, especially with the young designer, he, he asked me to change the red in blue. He ruined my creation. <laughs> so, the client, we have to teach, we have the knowledge, we are the experts. W what I can see in 10 years that there is more and more people in the client side that are digital. Ten years ago, uh, there was nobody who was digital in the client side. Now we have some people who were in agency like us who are moving to the client side, and now it's quite easy to, uh, to, uh, to exchange. But what we use the most is pedagogy and patience. So instead of saying, for example, if the client say, he asked me to change the red to blue. So here you are, you are on the what I don't really like, is I love or I don't love the blue or the red. Now, when, when you try to make his, him speak and saying, why do you want to change this red to blue? But there is some reason behind. So maybe we'll say, for example, red is more dynamic, it's a more playful, it's more uh, joyful. I don't know, blue is a bit sad. So with, with speaking with, with him, you can then modify your design, explain him with patience, and then be sure that uh, your web design will be uh, conserved. Uh, with uh, this very simple approach, from the first art direction that we can design, the really first draft and the final result, there is no so much uh, difference. Because I saw on some uh, case studies that when you see the really first art direction, it's uh, really great, and when we have the result online, you are a bit uh, disappointed. So what we're trying to do now as much as possible is to involve the client in the creativity process. Uh, I think the clients are now ready for that. Before, you were sending your work and the client was coming back with a list of uh, updates. Now we try really to make him participate as much as possible in, as much as possible in the creativity process. So. It's quite simple, we have some tools, maybe you know these tools. So we use Invisio and Bugger. So unfortunately, there is, only, there is not only one tool for, for doing that. But with Invisio, we do all our wireframes and art direction. And the client can comment in live what he likes, what he don't like, so, or, or so some comments. That means that we have a constant uh, and live uh, contact with the client. 
and the, the, the guy who is in charge of the client is the expert. So when we are in conception, it's Mathilde, the UX leader, with, with the client. When it's the art direction, it's the expert who is directly with the client. Of course, we have a project manager to, to make, it, uh, make it work, but as much as possible, we put the expert into the client. And the other one is Bugger, and now it's this part is for HTML and, uh, and development. So the client have a specific address where he can see really his website going live from wireframes to final, final result. We have a specific uh, room for that. Uh, so, uh, that's the place that we do our brainstorm with the client, and we don't hesitate to tell the client, if we want to stay in this room for the rest of the <coughs> day, you can. Because sometimes the client may have two hours to come to the meeting, then two hours to the go back, and it can stay in ultra noir to work all the day. So, that that's means that uh, it's very simple, but the client has the feeling that he's more involved into our creative process. The teams need creativity. What I would call the award effect. Uh, I think it's also especially with the young designer that we have. Uh, when you create a website, for me, the award is the cherry on the cake. It's the, it's the something that uh, is added to your work. But it's not a goal. Because we have some, uh, some people that think, I want on this website to have an awards, site of the day, site of the month, site of the year. But when you do that, you forgot just one person is the user. Because to have a site of the month or a site of the year, you have to do incredible things. But do you really ask to yourself, if I'm in, a, in the shoes of the user, will he understand these things? That's what we add with Flash, and I just don't want the same with uh, with HTML. But it's important for young designers to be proud of their work and that their work is be recognized. So what we are trying to do is every three months to do a really creative project. It can be an internal project with what we call carte blanche, so you have a, a lot of freedom, so you can test a lot of effect and then getting an award. About the awards, uh, there is a skateboarder that I love, he's called uh, Rodney Mullen, I don't know, and he says you only won an award once. So it's the first time it makes you very happy, and then the second, the third, well, you, you see agency that, that have more that 100 uh, awards on a on specific website. So the, or the first is, uh, is always very good. Okay, just a little question for you. What is the most creative? Is it, well, it's a bit caricature, but is it to turn a page with a 3D, 3D effect in HTML for the first time? Is it something that you consider very creative? Or is it reducing an e-commerce funnel from eight to two steps? What is the most creative thing? What I would say is that what is more creative is reducing an e-commerce funnel from eight to two steps, and maybe you can have a, a nice switch between the two steps. It can be a 3D, uh, a 3D effect, for example. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I was saying is that we try to do creative and useful things at the same time. That's why I try to always explain to the team that creativity is everywhere. It can be in a form contact, it can be in a strategy of a website, it can be um, testing the new uh, top effect in HTML, but it's everywhere. That's why in Ultra Noir, we're trying to work on many, many kinds of projects. We have corporate websites, we have extranet for clients, we have e-commerce websites, we have event website, brand website. But for me, a good professional is a guy who can be creative in every kind of project, because creativity is to solve a problem and bring it to the client, to the user. We had, uh, we had this uh, question several times in interviews, the, is, is, is there a specific French approach for creativity? This uh, je ne sais quoi. Uh, when you travel all over the world, and uh, for example in China, or when you speak about France, it's always the same, um, the same things. I think we are not the best design, designers country in the world. We have Philip Stark, 
that maybe everybody knows, but uh, apart from him, uh, not really. Donc, uh, so the people always talk about Versailles, Louis XIV, Napoleon, the Eiffel Tower, and of course the luxury, the art, art de vivre, Chanel, Dior, etc. But I think that now things are changing. So maybe you have noticed uh, that Daft Punk have uh, won uh, five Grammy Awards, <laughs> and uh, it's a French band, and nobody knew their face. If I have a friend of, of a friend who knew, knew their face, but uh, anyway. But in France, I think we have some of the best agency in the world. We have Anonymous here, if you know, Sight of the Year, quand même, bravo. We have Uzik, we have Soleil Noir, we have Greg, so our, I think there is a really, really great um, seen in, uh, in France with very talented web agency and I think it's, a, it's an healthy competition. When I see Anonymous uh, launching a great website, what we want to do is to do better than, than, than them. But it's a, it's a, it's a healthy uh, competition. But what we prefer from Versailles to Daft Punk is try to taking the best of it. There is a sentence that I love, is uh, believe in style, not in fashion. It's from Coco Chanel. And you see that in web design, a lot of people follow fashion. In, in a moment, there is Parallax website. The concept was done by a guy, I don't know if you know, Ian McCall is uh, one of my favorite uh, UX designers. He's the guy who invented the Parallax effect. But when you have seen a free Android website with the Parallax effect, uh, you can't handle it anymore. So what we're trying to do, maybe it's a bit uh, pretentious, but we are trying to produce things as timeless as possible. For example, we, uh, we designed the, the website of uh, Philip Stark. Well, uh, it was five years ago, and the site is, is still online. Now it will be impossible to win a an award with, the, with this website, but it's still, it's still, it's still cool. Quoi. It's easy to navigate, it's clear, there is a strong identity made by the object of Stark, and that's what the, the kind of thing we, we, we love. If I would define a, a kind of fresh spirit, uh, I would say that there is a kind of uh, elegance in, uh, in design. Just to finish, is your workplace good for creativity? Just to show you a little bit some uh, some picture of uh, our offices. So we are, uh, all everything is white, expect uh, so it's ultra white. So we are in the in the our main office is in Bastille. It's in the middle of Paris, and this place was the place where all you have all the craftsmen and uh, their workshop. And uh, we love that spirit, so that's why now uh, the, I think the new uh, craftsmen, uh, men, craftsmen men, uh, or uh, designers. Uh, so we put some iconic objects such as uh, like Karl Lagerfeld or, or something like that. And, uh, and that's it. So the next part will be how to be creative, whatever the concept context of the project by uh, Mathilde. Um, so in fact, we have selected three different works from, uh, with various subjective and targets, and we will try to show you how is it possible to convey something a bit different and innovative. Uh, so first we have a project for uh, Radio France Le Move, which is a French radio station that contacted us to produce a website to pay tribute to Joy Division. And uh, the main issue was how to be creative in a very short period of time and with very few content. So in fact, that to say, um, you guys have to launch the website in three weeks and you can only use a 30 minute interview of uh, Peter Hook, the guitarist, four additional video for music band inspired by Joy Division, and the Spotify playlist, and that's it. So with that, you have to create a fun experience that eases content discovery and put the user at the heart of Joy Division universe. <coughs> so uh, the website concept was uh, pretty simple. We try to explore a new way to, to listen an audio track and to push related data. So here you can see a little video. Okay. 
So um, the first step was to define a creative user experience. Uh, thus, we decided to put the Peter Hook interview at the center of the website and to experiment a sort of tagging system, allowing the <coughs> user to navigate by topics. Uh, we needed, in a way, to make this long 30-minute piece more fun and best less linear. So uh, now, each time the audio track comes across the, a particular issue, it appears as a tag on the screen linking additional content. Uh, it was also a good way to give the whole website a cool database vibe using geometrical elements. Uh, in fact, the most difficult task was to create a style guide within the style of 80s rock, which is known as being uh, very dark and mysterious. So we had to create a complete graphic identity that would not betray Joy Division spirit. Um, the first band uh, cover artwork, uh, which is uh, a known pleasure, uh, which is a sound wave pulsar inspired us to create uh, the sound player of the, the website. And for the transitions between sections, we play with the idea of a record turning. Uh, so as you saw on the video, the final product is very functional and fluid. And uh, the, uh, as a result, the audience and the client were very eager to discover the website. Um, our second case in point is how to be creative with a corporate website. So let me introduce you to a website we made for Esmod Dubai, which is uh, the French, uh, sorry, the Arabic affiliate of uh, Esmod Fashion School. In fact, the main issue was to strike the right balance between something corporate, <coughs> but at the same time, original and unconventional. Um, by this, I mean uh, we needed to keep a very clear design, providing uh, the user with easy data browsing and most of all, generate contacts and uh, enrollments. Um, so with a school website, normally they are not only visually unattractive, but they also tend to be badly organized sometimes. So we try to go around this and to produce an experience that will inspire future students. So here you can see the video of the home page. So um, here you can discover some wireframes and compare them to the final design. Uh, as you can see, we try to make them as precise as possible. Uh, we wanted to provide a very clear navigation allowing the user to discover the whole school at a glance. So the home page presents a very simple layout, easy to adapt and to manage for the client. We mix uh, useful blocks such as uh, discover the program and also more funny parts like social wall. Um, we use the chic like and elegant style coming from fashion magazines uh, with big pictures and clear fonts. But the problem was to put some accents of creativity to enhance the, the content. So um, we created a special model uh, that can be featured at the top of the home page. Uh, so here uh, you can switch between student sketches and the final works. So it shows student work in the most realistic way. Then uh, in order to present the various school program, we conceived the card module. Uh, that enables students to quickly select a program according to their level and discover its specification easily. Um, the last little feature I want to present is the school calendar. Uh, that's a bit like the previous model, but helps to make the calendar more funny and playful. 
Um, so, uh, so far, the feedback we got was that the students are as split as the school, and in fact, the enrollment have improved considerably. Uh, last but not least, we are very proud to present today our last creation for France Television. Uh, this, French uh, this French network is known for its cultural impact and for the quality of its program. And they contacted us with a very ambitious project that was to provide an utmost interactive frame for their historical series, Apocalypse World War I. Uh, the project is already live, but the full experience uh, will be available when the series launches in early March. <coughs> Um, practically speaking, they wanted us to do uh, to produce a platform that will follow the live broadcast and offer uh, the audience exclusive online content. Uh, the whole experience had to be very clear and not disrupt the viewing of the show. Um, it enables the user to learn anecdotes and additional facts about the uh, World War One. So here you can discover the video of the website. <coughs> wow. Coming soon in, in awards. So um, first, the platform have to evolve around the documentary, but not still its focus. Hence, the homepage hub um, had to offer uh, access to all additional content <coughs> while keeping the focus in the episode. <coughs> so we try to explore a new way to watch TV and to learn about content and the historical facts. So here you can discover some way of frame. And the main tool we conceive for this project is a smart timeline that sends live notices when additional content is available. For instance, when the documentary addresses one of historical character, you get a notice to learn more about his biography. And if you will, you can easily switch to the library to access to the full bio of the character. Uh, our favorite feature is this interactive map uh, that works just like the timeline and automatically changes the focus to different location when they are mentioned in the episode. Uh, another example is when a battle is discussed on the documentary, not only you can, <coughs> can you see where it happens, but you can also uh, access to the library at any time to learn more about it. So next, Nathan is going to talk about creativity and development. Okay, hello. I've been called Nathan for the, for the last year, but normally I can Nathan, so if you see me later, you can choose which one you want to call me. So I wanted to start, is it creative developers? I'm guessing we have a, a, a fair few here today. I've noticed a few in the room. So about a year ago, I, uh, I decided to set out from Australia. Yes, I'm Australian. Probably took you a couple seconds to realize that. And uh, I set out for clearer waters, and uh, I arrived right here in Paris, actually in France, and I had very little planned, and so I started searching for jobs straight away. And I, luckily, I stumbled upon Ultra Noir, actually thanks to the award site, so it's, it's thanks to you guys that I, I'm, I'm working for them right now. Um, and so thankfully, they, uh, they took an interest in my underdeveloped portfolio at this stage and uh, gave me a chance, so that was thank you to you guys. <laughs> so I, about a week before I started... JB, he, he told me that, uh, oh, we've just, we've just been sent this uh, leap motion. So I'm like, awesome. Like, do you, got, do you want to come in early and uh, have a play with it? So, so I'm like, of course, I said, I would, I would think about it. And then I said yes a couple seconds later. <laughs> so uh, the first day I arrived, it was, it was pretty challenging, it was, uh, especially having to learn the names because it's a new experience for me as an Australian. Because in Australia, everyone's just called mate. 
So it makes it, it makes it a little bit easier. But at the end of the day, I had this little logo that was turning around in 3D and changing color, and I was just so relieved that I had something to show and something that was functioning. And uh, everyone seemed pretty impressed, so I, I succeeded in, uh, in, in winning their favor. But um, what's interesting is that night I posted a little video, I was just too happy. I posted a little video, little video on Facebook, and I had about five ex colleagues contact me and want to just catch up all of a sudden and see what I've been up to. So there's a bit of a creative jealousy there, so I was, uh, I was pretty happy with my decision to move to France. And actually, what happened a few months later is that we continue with this sleep motion, and I just wanted to share with you the prototype that, was, uh, that came as a result of it. There's me looking super enthused in the corner there. So here we've got a, a 3D watch, which uh, the, the exercise was not only to test out the Leap's functionality and see how we could use it, but we actually wanted to find a, a real-life case and of course, if you look at objects and being able to expand them and go in and uh, inspect seemed like the perfect case. So, uh, and so this was just a little prototype we made for, for no one in particular. There you go. There you go. Creative developer, like I said at the start. You may have heard of it. May not. But uh, it's the latest hot commodity uh, if, you, if you follow Twitter. And so I just wanted to give you a, give you a rundown of how it's done. You can thank me later. Hey, step one obviously, to add creative into your job title. <laughs> I apologize for this. It's kind of like a wall of shame, but there's me in the corner. I'm actually pretty sure that a few of you are actually in the room right now. Step two, open a code pen account, or shade to toy, if you, if, if you think you're a genius. These are basically little, if you don't know them, they're like experimental uh, uh, networks where you can... Uh, experiment with, um, with uh, the latest technology and, and see the code at the same time as seeing the result. Of course, doing the experiments is, is optional. You just need to have an account and a little, little, little link. And the last step, because you're just too creative to be kept into one site, the idea is to make the least creative, simple portfolio as possible. And I apologize, Nicola, I know you're right there. <laughs> so, this is not at all trying to make fun of you. There's me in the corner. So uh, please don't hate me. <laughs> So I've done all of these things, and I can say that my creativity has been booming ever since. Of course, I was joking about all that. All right, so right now, are you a creative thinker? At this moment, I am the least creative person in this room. And I'm going to explain that. In our brain, the frontal lobe, it's the part responsible for self-monitoring, so watching what you're saying or wondering what people are thinking of you. And so right now, mine is, mine is pumping. It's working over time. And what this does is it inhibits your ability to be creative. So think about a moment when you've been embarrassed on stage or, or worried about people's opinions. This was not your most creative moment, I assure you. So an important thing is to find a comfortable location or actually doing a mindless task such as, as jogging or playing with Lego or eating or drawing. Tell me if I'm talking too fast. I tend to, tend to speak too fast. I'm speaking too fast? No, that's okay. Okay. And so break it down. Creativity, for me, is, is basically being able to mix and match separate ideas, like things that are not expected. So it's about you have a problem, and it's about a unique, finding a unique solution or thinking about the problem in a unique way. So I wanted to explain the science behind this. We have two temporal lobes on either side. You might have heard that the right side is, is your creative side. Well, that's where that comes from. They're actually uh, in charge of non-verbal information processing. So it's basically like your, your mental library of knowledge. And your right-hand side, it sends out larger signals than the left. And therefore, it's able to, to reach more distant knowledge. And so therefore, when you think of like a more unexpected answer or you have this sudden realization, that's thanks to your right-hand side. And uh, I've just recently learned about these two tips that I've been doing unknowingly, and I just wanted to, to share them with you. The first one was to seek out challenges. Now, no matter what domain you're in, design, development, in the middle, you're always uh, faced with a problem, and therefore you'll always have the chance to be creative about finding your solution. So I just wanted to give you guys a little challenge. Are you ready for a challenge? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a well-known optical illusion, and the idea is to be able to see a young girl and an old grandmother at the same time. You have a few seconds to do it yourself. If, you, if you're struggling, you use the chin of the young girl as the nose of the grandmother. I see some nodding. Okay. Moving on. The, se the second one is between a face and a goose. There's an, apparently only, only a small number of people are able to see the goose. Now, I can't even see the goose, and, and I made this. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, that was a joke. Uh, this is one that is, is a lot more challenging. But I want you to just get to start thinking about it. So the idea is to create a true statement using all of these letters once but only once. So the idea might be 2 plus 3 equals 45. Obviously, that's not the answer. So I'll let you guys just mull this over for, for a few seconds. I'll, um, I'll give you the... If you want, I'll give you the answer at the end of the at the end of the prayers, or you can come and see me later. So, one my point with all this is that if you're not challenged, especially as a developer, you have to find your own challenges and create your own. And this next little insert is this is actually another prototype that we released, which actually was derived from the developer. So, I actually, I come from a, a very short. Uh, animation background, and I've only, always felt limited as a developer with uh, scale, rotation, translation. And so this was an attempt to break out from that using SVG graphics, which is based on points, and able to animate a rig so that I could have deformation and, uh, and movement. So I'll just let that finish. I think that's the end. So yeah, sorry, my point about this was, that as a dev, we're normally the last to see a project, and we're normally the last to touch a project. So you know, our creative input is never the one that drives the project. We're always the ones that have a little input here, like, oh, what if we make that fly across the screen instead of flashing in? But what, what, what was possible is that a dev can just as easily run a project as a creative developer, and I want to see more of that. Second tip is break your routine. Obviously, moving to France is a good way of doing this. But what this does is actually help to, to break your cognitive patterns, so your same way of thinking and your, your rigidness. So doing something as simple as changing your route on your way home can just make you think of different ideas that you, you never thought of before. And uh, speaking from experience, uh, I, didn't, I barely spoke any French when, when, when arriving here. And um, actually, it was good because... Well, I knew it was a few hand gestures, and so my first day I was working with Elite Motion, and that's all it understands, so it was a match made in heaven. But, uh, yeah, having to learn the language at the same time as, as working, it's just like I had my mind all over the place, and it was like super creative, super creative time. Finally, I have the privilege of introducing the Ultranile Lab, which includes those two protos that I've explained previously, but we, we currently have five prototypes, soon to be eight, and this is basically a, a place for us, I'm sure you all know about labs and companies have, this is a place for us to put in our ideas, uh, spend time, just let our creativity run wild. And I find this super important, as I said, to seek out challenges. This is just something anyone can do, uh, devs especially. And uh, here's a quick little demonstration. This will be the, the home page, it's not yet, not yet created. This one you've already seen, using SVG, SVG data points. This one was a test using Google Speech. We found it was actually quite difficult to use, but uh, it, was a, it was a prototype just like the others. This one was uh, it's, it's a bit older now, but this was uh, to use WebGL when it first came out, and also uh, using tweets and incoming, incoming grams, uh, sorry, feeds. Here we have the leap motion, as you've seen. This one's actually using Canvas, which has been around for a long time now, but a, uh, a new way of, of doing transitions between images. So something as simple as that, at the same time as having these feeds between Instagram and, and Twitter and everything. So it was just a nice mixing. <coughs> nice end of that. Thank you.